Hello, everybody. Welcome to Brighten Your World, Part 3. I'm so happy to be here. Today's a day of uh, great celebration because Part 3 of my video symbolizes the completion of one month of eye radiation, which has already restored a significant part of my vision. So it's been a tiring month, but also a very exciting month. And I'm going to take a moment just to check in and kind of decide where I want to dive in because there's so much that I could talk about. So I'm just going to kind of close my eyes and I can feel the feel and hear the fire behind me. I can feel the pillow supporting my back. I feel my, let my body kind of sink into the chair. Take a few deep, relaxing breaths as I settle into this moment. It's been a little bit of a crazy month. As you all know, it started with, well, it started actually a few months ago with the news that, I, that they had located a large tumor in my right eye, uh, a very tiny tumor in my left eye, and a small tumor in the lining of my brain. And that began a series of events of testing of brain MRIs and eye MRIs and brain CTs and eye specialists. And then I had secondary issues with the swelling in my liver, which the swelling had increased, which was putting pressure on my colon, which was putting pressure on my spleen. So I, there was all this, um, um, pressure, I keep using the same word, and not enough space in this area, so bowel movements became excruciatingly painful, and I ended up being in and out of the hospital, going by ambulance to the hospital several times, trying to sort what was going on. And uh, through the grace of God, or I always say the universe, or Buddha, or nature. Um, I'm not particular about what reference you give it. Um, we started to work things out. So first of all, we put me on um, a low maintenance, round the clock pain medication, because I had to humble myself and say medication is not bad, which I know I speak a good talk, but this is an area that I have to practice, not just speaking, but living. Really, there are tools that are available, and none of these tools are good or bad, none of them. It's just finding the tools that work best for your situation and working with them so that you can get the maximum benefits with the least amount of side effects. And it takes a great deal of consciousness to the process to be able to find your way through that because everything is constantly shifting. So we, I humbled myself and began the um, baseline pain medication. So it's slow release 24 hours and then I just take additional medication on an as-needed basis. Then we also started me on a, um, what's it called, a, uh, Beth Ellis, what's it called, the, uh, steroid. steroid, thank you. I just had my uh, makeup, multi-talented set designer, hair, hair stylist help me with the word I was blocking, the steroid to reduce inflammation because if there's less inflammation, then there's less pressure. 
So if we can get my liver to stop pushing on my colon, to stop pushing on my spleen, to stop pushing on everything, then um, there's more space and I'm in less pain. So that was the second intervention that we did. And then of course, we started on the radiation from my eyes, four weeks of treatment. And we began treatment planning that will start next week for the small tumor, very small, in the lining of my skull or brain. And and I started on, I've been on chemo now. I'm just starting round five. I'm two weeks on, one week off. And through all this, I've managed to get stronger. <laughs> I mean, that's the miracle. So in and out of the emergency room, you know, can't have, a, can't have a bowel movement without ending up in the hospital, four weeks of radiation on my eyes, four rounds of chemo, uh, starting on steroids, you know, this would be a time that most people might consider giving up. And I did think about it, but something inside me said, you know, we're going to give this, we're going to try. And the biggest surprise is that I'm stronger. I, I can, I can barely even comprehend it. How can, a, how can I be on chemo and radiation and be stronger? But I am because, um, because I'm, have, I'm getting maximum benefits with the least amount of side effects. So I'm very, very lucky. The, the treatment plan that we've come up with for the moment is working. There's a very important line that um, my doctor from Mexico, when I was in Mexico, said to me, he said, cancer is a dynamic disease, meaning it's constantly changing, and you have to change with it if you want to continue to progress. So even now, this wonderful treatment plan that is working may not be working in a month, may not be working in two months. In order to really, truly find the best quality of life of possible under these conditions, you have to constantly be tuning in and constantly be willing to be flexible because you don't, you don't develop a treatment plan and, be, and you're not done. It just doesn't work like that. The treatment plan constantly needs to be tweaked as the symptoms and as the nature of the illness shifts. And so what I was doing what had been working for a while and then it stopped big time. And I went into a state of distress, high distress, and uncertainty and a great pain. But I was able to get hooked up with the proper professionals and I was able to tune in with my body and we stabilized things. And we may have to do it again sometime because that's the nature of the illness, but it's also the nature of healing. It's not just the nature of the illness. I'll repeat that, it's the nature of healing. Consistent, ongoing consciousness of what is going on in the body and paying attention to it. And my strength being continuing to combine the best of the Western conventional treatments with the best of the Eastern alternative treatments. That's my gift because when I first started this journey, I was afraid of my power. I wanted these doctors, please take over, please tell me what to do. And because it was overwhelming, especially when you're forging your own path. And it's taken me almost a year to finally not just be comfortable in my power, but to prefer it. Because who knows better than what bo my body needs than me? How could anybody possibly know? And also to understand that these doctors, I have a team of phenomenal, phenomenal professionals, medical professionals, but they all have strengths and they all have limitations. They all work within their certain mindset. They have a way of thinking. They have a way they've been trained. 
and I pick the people or, or God or the universe sends me the people that will best serve me, but they only know their peace. So I'm the one, I take the best from each person and I'm the one who has to integrate it all. Nobody knows really my whole treatment plan except for me. Nobody really has the capacity to even understand it except for me. Everybody understands their own peace. And this required me to not be afraid of my power and my gifts and to use them. And it also required me to see the professionals, the medical professionals more humanly, to be able to acknowledge their strengths and to also acknowledge the limitations. It's not even a weakness, it's just to know what are they, what are they highly skilled at and what are they not so skilled at? And to be okay with that because I'm not looking for them, I'm not looking for any one individual to cure me or to have the answers. I'm looking for everybody to offer me the best of what they have and then it's now, I'm now the captain of my ship. I've been the captain of my ship but I've kind of been going under, under to the lower parts of the ship and kind of hoping that somebody else would just steer it for me because I'm like, this is too much responsibility. I can't handle this. And now I'm like, I've, I've gotten out of the gallows and I'm on the top deck and I'm like, ship ahoy, or whatever, the, whatever the sailing words are. I'm sailing my ship and I'm the one who should be steering it and I'm the one who's, who's the best equipped to steer it. And I think that's been the biggest psychological shift is me not being afraid of my power or my gifts and owning it and realizing that that's the only way this job can be done is with me being in charge. So that's a condensed version of the past couple months that have brought me to this point. And I want to take a moment again to, I'm dressed in, um, Stuart, will you be able to see me if I stand up? Okay, I'm standing up because I'm proud because I had lost a lot of weight. So my weight is coming back on my body. This is like the first time I'm starting to actually be able to fit in my own clothes. So it's very exciting. And I'm also dressed up because I'm celebrating, yes, if there was a drum roll, the completion of one month of eye radiation. And even more than that, I'm celebrating the return of my eyesight and the return of my strength and the return of my vitality and the return of my hope and some optimism for the future that I never thought would return. So uh, these, are, these are also my, these are from my, this outfit's from my tango days. I'm not quite ready to be on the tango dance floor, but I'm at least ready to put on my tango clothes today and who knows, six months from now, who knows, maybe, maybe someday I might find myself on the tango floor again. I hope is, is my, um, Okay, sorry, I was checking in again. I stood up so I wasn't sure if I lost my microphone, but I'm informed that I'm still fine. So I'm gonna take another breath because I realize I'm kind of excited. I just expended a lot of energy, so I'm gonna resettle in, closing my eyes again. <sighs> taking one of those deep breaths that kind of helps me sink into the chair. Hearing the fire crackling in the background. Ah, again, feeling the pleasure of a deep breath. Ah, slowing down a little bit. Feeling the air, the oxygen moving in, expanding and then contracting in my belly. Enjoying having space in my belly for my belly to even be able to expand and contract. Hmm. Even just enjoying the act of breathing, just the, re, just the pleasure of taking it in and being filled with resource and then letting out what's not needed. 
and how we can revitalize ourselves, so that, nourish ourselves through that simple process of just taking in, breathing the air, and letting our bodies get nourished by what we need, and then releasing what we don't need. And doing that over and over, and how that process of breath is always there for us. 24-7, whether we're sleeping, whether we're awake, whether we're dancing tango, whether we're sitting in a chair, it's always there to support us, to nourish us. Mm. Ah. So funny how something so simple like a breath can feel pleasurable if you bring your attention to it and allow yourself to feel the pleasure of it. Hmm. Hmm. Ah, so I'm gonna switch gears a little bit and talk about crystals that seem to be in alignment with the, with the current themes in my life right now. Um, I actually, I don't usually take notes, but for this I did because there were some key points that I wanted to really make sure that I got across. And the first stone that I picked um, is a ruby. And ruby is the, um, the first chakra, the lower the base, and it um, helps connect us with the earth. And when you revitalize the first chakra, it helps you pull up the earth energy and draw it up the spine. And it's a beautiful, pretty pinkish red color. And ruby um, stimulates life force, life force energies. And it signals a time of renewed energy, which we can, I'm sure, those of you who have been watching my videos, it's pretty evident that I'm having a surge, another surge, seems to come in waves, another surge in my vitality. And rubies vibrate with an enthusiasm for life, instilling an open-hearted willingness to take whatever leaps of faith are required to move forward. If one feels stuck in any sort of rut, career, relationship, spiritual path, ruby can provide the energy to get things moving. So the, the ruby is very symbolic because here I am four weeks ago with a month of eye radiation ahead of me, outcome uncertain, and the brain radiation will be between one to five treatments. We're working out the details, but that also ahead of me, and it could have been a time to just throw my hands in the air and say enough. You know, it seemed like it was the beginning of the end. It just seemed like the cancer just kept, you know, more and more bad news. And instead, I just said, um, I'm going to try. And the, the, so the energy of like using the ruby, the energy of the ruby to push through, you know, to get extra strength, to pu really push through a difficult um, stretch. And again, the biggest surprise being that through all this, I would end up on the other side, not just stronger, but really stronger than I've been in a year. I'm the strongest I've been, I think, since I received the diagnosis of metastasis. Um, it's the, oh, I got so much good news too. They, I just got my recent labs back and every, since the past year, since I became aware that I had metastasized cancer, I've been anemic. My, means my red blood count cells are very low and every month or two I have to go in the hospital and get a blood transfusion to boost my red, to boost the numbers. So anything below eight requires a blood transfusion. I had dropped to a six. I mean, I was very anemic. And in my most recent blood work, my red blood cells went up to a 10 without any blood transfusion. My, my, I'm healing, my body, 
usually in order to go up, I have to have a blood transfusion. My, the numbers went up higher without any intervention. And my liver enzymes went down, which is a good thing. When the doctor rattles off numbers, I have to ask her, is that good or bad? Like, she says, oh, your number enzymes, your liver enzymes went down. I'm like, well, that means nothing to me. Is that good or is that bad? I need to know the number, and then you need to tell me good or bad. Otherwise, you're just rattling off things that don't make sense to me. But basically, all my um, lab works, she just, it was just one positive, significant improvement after another. So my body is responding um, really positively treatment I have. You've probably heard me talk about the tumors that are visible on my body that are like we're pushing through the skin. I'm watching them go down in size. Like my eyes are watching them. <laughs> Here's the tumor. I'm watching it get smaller and smaller and then become flesh with my, you know, with the rest of my body. Um, The results are really beyond words. It's, you know, the cancer is not, mm, they say, you know, it's not a permanent, well, people in the conventional world say metastasized cancer is not curable. Um, I don't really listen to anybody anymore because, um, well, because miracles do happen every day. People have spontaneous, um, uh, I, I just don't, I don't listen to anything limiting. So I don't know what's going to happen with me, but I feel like I've hit a plateau where I can relax, where I don't have to be working 24 seven to get my video launch, to get my website launched because there might not be enough time for me. I'm not in that, in that crisis mode. I'm, I feel like, wow, um, I can relax a little bit. <laughs> I can, tonight I can sit back and watch a movie and chill and do what I feel like. Um, it's, it's, it, there's a, such a marked decrease in the amount of pressure that I feel. And again, that's part of what I'm celebrating. It's part of why I'm in my red dress and I'm surrounded by beautiful crystals is because I feel there's so much to celebrate. And my next video in two weeks, uh, I'll likely be done with all the radiation and there'll be even a, fr uh, even a, a deepening of this, cel this, this energy that you're seeing today. We'll be going into it even a little deeper next week as we conclude this. Really, it will have been about three months of this upheaval, <laughs> you know, it's there's, there's really hard to find words for it. So I want to, um, I, I showed you the, the beautiful ruby. I'm showing it to you again. Uh, I love the richness of it. And ruby also, since it helps connect you to your body, it also assists in healing from sexual and self-abuse, which anyone who watches my videos knows that those are issues, predominant issues in my life that have strongly contributed to the cancer. There are many, many factors that have contributed to me getting cancer, but certainly that's one of the issues. So I use a book called, I use two books for references when I'm unclear about the meaning of crystals, the crystal ally cards, and the Book of Stones. I'm not advertising these books, I'm just naming them because some of the words I use might be quotes from the, might be direct quotes from those authors. So I just wanna make sure that I, that I acknowledge the book. And the affirmation for this beautiful ruby stone is, I allow the, fo the life force within me to rise and strengthen my mind and body. So I allow the life force within me to rise and strengthen my mind and my body. So what a beautiful uh, and fitting energy to have during this time of transformation. So thank you, Ruby, for uh, your assisting me 
during this time of great transition. And in addition to the ruby, sometimes together we have, uh, hold this here, you can see it's, it's been carved into a rose. It's a combination of ruby and zoosite. So ruby is the reddish purplish pink stone and the zoosite is the green stone, the petals of the rose. And this is a beautiful, beautiful combination of energies. Uh, I've always been drawn to this ruby zoosite combination. And now I have two roses. Again, the rose is the ruby and the petals are the zoosite. And I'm gonna also get one more. This lovely one is so sweet because you can see it has, um, it has a little, little ruby and it has some budding rubies on the side. And this one, you can really see the zoosite. There's more green. So I'm gonna take a moment and put all three in my hand if I can, so we can just see this lovely, I'll call this the lovely ruby zoosite garden in my hand. Again, the roses being the rubies and the green petals being the zoosite. And now I'm going to read you about zoosite. So green zoosite, because zoosite comes in other colors, is a powerful healer of the emotional body, promoting stress, that's promoting positive states that support healing. Anyone who's been following me knows that your state of mind determines whether or not you're in a healing state. If you're anxious and criticizing yourself and worrying, the body can't heal. It's in a state of distress. If you're calm and you're thinking peaceful thoughts and you're nurturing your body and your spirit and your soul and you're relaxing, then the body says, oh, thank you. Now I have all these resources that I can put towards healing. So zoosite supports that, supports putting the body in a healing state. Interesting thing enough, I didn't know this, but zoosite is an excellent stone for immune balance and cancers, and it helps restore vitality after radiation and chemotherapy. I didn't know that. I read that in the Book of Stones book. I was not aware that zoosite, um, again, the green leaves, on this carving, that that stone helps one recover from radiation and chemo. So how appropriate, since I just finished a month of radiation, have another few treatments to go, at least one, and I'm currently on chemo, that seems like it would be a good stone to have as a friend right now, the zoosite. And when ruby and zoosite are combined in a single stone, the root, the root, the heart, and the third eye chakras are strongly stimulated and harmonized. So that's so important because if the root and the heart and the third eye are, are in harmony, that means the whole body is working, the body's working as a whole. Because if you have a block in one area, it actually affects all the areas. So it means everything's aligning, everything's working together everything is integrating. And the affirmation for the Zwazite zone is my, my mind, my heart, my body, my soul and spirit blend in perfect harmony as I manifest my true self. I'm gonna repeat that one because I like it. My mind, heart, body, soul and spirit blend in perfect harmony as I manifest my true self. So that's the affirmation for the lovely Zoosite stone. Again, um, the beautiful carving of the ruby Zoosite, which um, again, the lovely, beautiful combination of those two energies. So again, we'll give thanks to the ruby and Thanks to the Zwasite and thanks to the Ruby Zwasite uh, combination. 
and I have one more stone to add to this lovely uh, uh, lovely energetic uh, what's the word this energetic landscape that I'm creating I have one more stone to add to it but I want to do another check-in another breathing settling revitalizing myself before I jump into the next stone so I'm going to take a moment again to ah, take one of those big release breaths hmm. feel my body my muscles kind of let go and sink a little deeper into the chair Mm. Ah, I feel my stomach expand as I take in breath and contract as I release and to give thanks that there's enough space to contract and expand without pain. Ah, I'll take a big breath on that one. Again, to hear the fire crackling in the background. <sighs> to remember that breath is always here, not just to provide oxygen, but it's here to nourish me. And it nourishes me whether I participate or not. In other words, it nourishes me when I'm awake, it nourishes me when I'm sleeping, it nourishes me when I'm conscious, it nourishes me when I'm not conscious. It's always there. Again, for me to breathe in what I need and for me to let go of what I don't need. And I can do that with every breath if I want to. Breathe in what I need and let go of what I don't need. Hmm. Ah, a few more deep breaths. Hmm. Hmm. So my last stone for today is emerald. And I'm going to pick up this uh, nicely, beautifully carved emerald in a matrix. Uh, you can see the, the matrix part is black and the emerald is the green part. And uh, I find the shape of this stone um, and the color of it and the energy of it. It's a very, uh, it's a little bit of unusual. This is a rather unusual stone. I'm very lucky to actually even to be able to have it. Uh, thank Mother Earth for creating it. Um, or whoever created Mother Earth, I guess, I should think, for creating such a beautiful stone. And you know, I really, actually this is a new stone. I got this stone to, for the purpose of making this video because I was feeling drawn to, I was, what, I was exploring what energies, what crystal energies I felt drawn to, and I felt drawn to emerald, and I didn't really actually own any emeralds. Emerald's a very expensive stone. This isn't necessarily, this is a nice stone actually, but um, so here is, I'm gonna show again, if I'm moving it, some of the different angles of this beautiful, and you can see the back, the black, matrix that it sits on. I'll just also show you a, hold a single crystal, single uh, emerald so you can see the color of a single stone. And then I'll read you a little bit about the emerald and how it fits in with the rest of the energetic landscape that I've created for myself. Okay. So emerald, love, compassion, healing, and abundance. I don't see how any of us can go wrong with those four things. 
An open heart allows the cornucopia of universal blessings to flow into one's life. And perhaps that is why emerald is also known as the stone of prosperity. Wearing emerald helps attune one's vibrational pattern to the spectrum of abundance, allowing one to attract what one needs and desires. Emerald, like the ruby, is also a stone of courage, another emotion which emanates from a strong and open heart. Also like ruby, emerald is a healing stone of victimization and rejection of personal power. Combining ruby with emerald helps bring the healing qualities of ruby in the first chakra in alignment with similar healing qualities of emerald in the heart. So in my opinion, a lot of what ruby does for the first chakra, emerald does for the heart chakra. And green, the green ray is the, is the healing color of the heart. The heart chakra heals from the green color. So combining the green of the zwasite with the green of the emerald creates a double healing power for the heart. Again, in this energetic landscape that I'm creating right now for myself with the ruby, the zwasite, and the emerald, by putting two green stones in, I'm really amplifying, I'm doubling the amount of healing energy that's being put towards the heart and then, you know, and then integrating that with what I'm putting into the first chakra with the ruby. So, so the affirmation for the emerald is, through love and compassion, all things are healed and blessings flow freely. So that is the, again, I'll hold uh, get to the color, that is the metaphysical properties of emerald. And I will also give thanks for Emerald for being present for me today energetically with the ruby and the zoocyte. So, it's been a long couple of months and in a way it's also been kind of like a snap both feel real. It feels real that it's been long and it feels real like I just kind of like woke up. Like it just happened. Like, like I feel like, oh, this has been this long three months. And then there's this feeling again of like I just snapped and I'm in a different space. Both feel real. Both, it, they seem like they wouldn't go together, but they, I feel like they have gone together. Those perceptions that seem like they would be skewed somehow seem to fit as far as how, as far as what I feel internally and in two weeks I'll be doing my next video which will be um, either I'll be done with the brain radiation or I'll be very close to done but that will be um, I'll come up with a better name for it than a brain radiation uh, last time I was going to make my, my videos on eye radiation and then uh, Brighten Your World came to me, which is a much more inviting topic. So it certainly won't be called brain radiation. It will be something, uh, it will be about actually, it is my senses, I haven't done it yet, but it's going to be more about the completion of a difficult time period. And, and entering calmer waters is something more along the lines of what the theme will be. And I think I'm getting ready to conclude, so I want to um, do a very short check-in with myself so I can gather up my thoughts to conclude in a way that, that feels good to me. Mm. 
Um, first of all, I want to um, just give thanks for the miracle of my life. I'm very aware that uh, every day that I live is truly a miracle. The doctors have told me for many months that the vast majority of people in my condition would have been dead many, 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 many months, maybe even years prior to where I am right now. Um, I want to give thanks for the gifts that I've been given and thanks for the courage to finally be able to own them and use them in the way that will best serve me. I want to give thanks that in the middle of all of this that I have truly blissful moments. I still can't believe it. Like here I am, you know, widespread metastasized cancer, lung, liver, breast, chest cavity, bone, eye, brain, I mean, <laughs> and difficulty moving and trips to the emergency room that I still have not just moments, but many moments of pure bliss. I, 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 I am so astounded and so deeply grateful that I can still have such a capacity for joy under these circumstances. And I think that's what I'm truly trying to model. I think that's the deepest message through my website is, let's see if I can phrase this properly. Um, You know, how can we live to the fullest in a sense regardless of circumstances? We have to deal with our circumstances, but sometimes we give our circumstances too much power and we don't realize that how much there still is to take in of this world. And so, you know, I, some days I just walk around, the, the littlest things make me happy, like, you know, like the when I find like the feathers to put in my vase, like I'll just go, I have a prop room with all my supplies and I'll just go and I'll just stare at my feathers and for like an hour, I'll just be giggling to myself thinking of all the different things I could do with the feathers. It's, they're such simple things and they bring me such immense joy and then I'll just say to myself, then I just step, so there's like, there's the joy and then there's stepping out beyond the joy and observing myself feeling joy and saying, oh my goodness, look at all this joy you're feeling. Nobody would believe, unless, except for the people that know, would believe that somebody in my condition could authentically, not forcing it, could authentically feel so much joy over just these simple pleasures like a white feather. Brings me, it makes me very happy. <laughs> um, I want to give thanks to my family who has really rallied together as I've healed, um, so has my family. There seems to be a very strong connection between my healing and the healing of those around me and the, the, the authentic effort that my family has put forth to try to support me. It's the stress on the caregivers is very, very high. My mom has been living with me kind of almost in a time warp for like seven months. She's had two breaks, both times because she became ill. It's like the only way she could get a break and not feel guilty was to become sick because her body just got worn out because it's a lot of work. Um, when I'm being rushed to the hospital and ambulances, you know, we're up around the clock. My mom's cooking for me in the middle of the night. She's not getting good night's sleeps, you know, day after day. Um, you know, she's scared because, you know, it's very scary to watch your child go through this and not know what the answers are. Um, very, very draining. So she's had, she's carried an enormous amount of stress. We're going to be working on lightening her schedule. And she has to take some responsibility for that because Sometimes she's given time for breaks and she doesn't always take them, so we're going to have to help her uh, 
be a little more responsible in taking care of herself. Uh, my brother, as I made many mentions to, are, has been enormously supportive. He comes out frequently to visit. He visited me in Mexico. He, visit, he lives in Toronto. He's visited me in Mexico. He's visited me in my home in Marin. And we speak almost daily. And uh, I know that I have his love and his deepest, deepest respect. And my father, who had a great deal of trouble finding his, his purpose at this time in our lives, he'd come visit my mom, but there wasn't much for him to do. And then he'd go home. And I joke, kind of joked he was like the wandering Jew. He, he, didn't know, he didn't know where to settle because it's like he was displaced. His wife was living with me, you know, his son's in Toronto, and he didn't really have a purpose in my healing. And recently he's become the cook. And he, he was not a cook before, but he is, um, He's now found a constructive role, which is helping feed my body. And he's, he's a big, significant component of why I'm happily plumping up and starting to look more healthy. And so I want to give thanks to the significant effort that the family members have contributed towards supporting me in my healing and in keeping me alive. Um, I want to thank the universe, the synchronicities, my spirituality, my consciousness internally, and my consciousness to the, the subtle and not so subtle cues that come outside of ourselves for all the gifts that I've been given that have allowed me the possibility of healing. I want to give gratitude for that. I always have to list off my uh, creative professionals who assist me. Um, Beth Ellis, who's here today, who's my, uh, she's multi-talented. She does the set design, makeup, and hair. And Stu, I hope it's okay, I mentioned you by first name, who does a phenomenal job doing he shoots the videos and then he has a work associate, associate who is equally talented in editing. So they work kind of as a team to produce these high quality videos that I'm so pleased to have the pleasure of sharing with you. To thank Nomi who does all the editing all for my writing because my website will not just have videos, it has a written blog, it has um, actually five years of letters that I've written, actually six years now. Um, there's a lot of writing on my website in addition to the videos. So I have someone who does my editing who is extremely talented. And my website designer who is doing the design end of the actual website, which is getting closer to being launched. I think three months is a possibility and certainly four months at the longest. I will be birthing uh, my website, which will be cancertheteacher.com. And that will be a very exciting moment that I will look forward to sharing with all of you. And I want to thank my inner circle who has supported me during the transition between creating and launching. Because if I had to keep all this bottled up inside of me, I don't know what would happen. It's important to create but then it has to circulate. The energy has to move. So the inner circle, who I'm speaking to right now, um, allows for the energy to circulate so that it doesn't get stuck. And it, it's holding me until I'm ready to launch into bigger realms. And I'm not outside in nature today, but I still want to I'm just taking a quick glance out my window. I want to give thanks to nature because nature always uh, supports me and nourishes me. And I want to, of course, give thanks to my crystals and my strong connection to their energies and acknowledge that these crystals are not just, uh, they don't just come out of nowhere. These are part of Mother Earth. So I am holding Mother Earth in my hands and I want to 
acknowledge that and thank Mother Earth in the most concrete of ways. Because I'm holding Mother Earth for supporting me uh, energetically through these beautiful, beautiful crystals that are a part of your core. And through them, you're able to connect with my core. And on that note, I will just take a moment to bow in deep gratitude and in abundance of blessings and to thank all those who are sharing with me, all those who have shared with me, all those who will be sharing with me in the future, and may others benefit from my journey. And when we're ready as a race and as a society and as a planet, may we find a less harmful, more graceful ways to address cancer. Amen.